all new sounds a bit dramatic as you look at the new 2012 Civic, yet that's exactly what it is. One of the best-selling cars in the world has become perhaps rather unnoticeable. Let's drive the 2012 Civic EXL with Nav and check the tech. An all-new Civic isn't like an all-new Mustang. These are conservative cars. Updates include a less doughy face up front, a rump that appears to have been taken from a Dodge Neon, an economy mode with a big green button, a new 5-inch information screen, and standard stability control to keep all of this right side up. First thing you notice when you get in the newly redesigned Civic is they've taken that Honda eyebrow dash to a new level, and I love it. Right in the center, a big digital speedometer. On the side of that, two segmented bars. It'll change color from either deep blue if you're driving like a pig, blue-green if you're not too heavy on the throttle, and green when you're driving like a Prius driver. On the left side is a segment gauge for fuel. On the right is your instantaneous MPG. Then you've got this new thing on the right, which is a completely new idea for Honda, this big LCD info gauge that ties into the left side controller here. Notice the theme, big and readable. The display, also the controller. This I button takes me through, I think, a combination of three screen positions. This one here, which is date and time. The next one, which is media. And the third one, which is kind of everything. Fuel economy, media, date and time, all rolled into one. That's the one I like. The same rocker lets you control your media. I can go track to track or station to station. If I hold the button down, it seeks the station. If I bump it once, it goes to my next preset. It's all very logical. Up and down gives you volume. And again, notice how all the graphics are very clear and easy to see at a glance. This is some nice interface work. And up here you've also got some of your basic vehicle setup menus. On the right-hand side of the wheel is a similar controller for cruise control. And then down here I've got my hands-free calling and my voice command button, which still remains kind of separate in a Honda, which never made any sense to me. This also doesn't make any sense. Why the hell do I have a huge tachometer in this car with an automatic? Get rid of it. There's got to be something else we can put there. Maybe not, because everything I care about is up on the eyebrow. Over here is the economy button. This car has either a regular mode or push the green button, and you now have got a wimpy car. It tailors back all of its driving responses to encourage you to use less fuel. Here's something else I don't care about. This head unit. I'm tired of it. It's ancient. This is completely now at odds with the rest of the interface work Honda has done. This is the old school. The kind of crunchy graphics, the little tiny fiddly knobs, the small typography on the legends. This is like 2005, and this is 2011. This doesn't belong here anymore. The navigation system is entirely serviceable. It's just not any fun to deal with. You do have live traffic here under the little tiny information button. That'll show up as a list or on the map. Same dopey controller Honda's had for years, but I think it's actually gotten smaller. This little mushroom cap thing, what's the point in a car? Your optical disc is up here. And among your audio choices are that CD, AM, FM, XM radio, no HD radio. And I've also got my USB pigtail down here. Auxiliary analog is up here. And once I get a phone paired up, I have Bluetooth streaming as well as hands-free calling. Audio output is straightforward, 160 watt amp, that's it. No subs, no surround, and no factory choices for an upgrade, not even on this high trim car. One transmission only on this EXL high trim car, it's this five speed automatic, relatively few gears for this day and age. No rear view camera standard or optional on a Civic still. No shifty thing, no gate, no paddles, no nonsense. This is not a race car, it's meant for getting around. Okay, in the engine bay, it's garden variety classic Honda stuff, which is a good thing. This car is about getting around efficiently for like 300,000 miles. And this is the kind of motor that does it. A not overstressed 1.8 liter inline four, sitting side saddle, driving the front wheels, 140 horsepower, 128 foot pounds of torque, gets this guy up to 60 in about 9.2 seconds, which is not the point on a basic Civic. MPG is. They deliver there at 28 City, 39 Highway. 39 highway, one shy of the magic 40. That's got to be killing them. Now compare those MPG numbers to the outgoing 2011 Civic, and you'll see they're two to three miles per gallon better on a car with an automatic. Nice, but nothing dramatic. Okay, let's drive our imminently civilized Civic EXL. Again, high trim car here. But most importantly, a Civic is a transportation device. The athleticism of this car isn't the point. You get a Civic SI for that. Now, as I mentioned, the five-speed transmission would appear to be a liability on paper, 
and the economy button here is one of interest. So let's see how those two work together. The nearest thing you've got to a sport position is D3. If you do that, you kind of drop out of economy mode. The car automatically says you're not driving greenly. So I'll leave it in D, and I'll test it with and without this economy thing on. Here's an on-ramp. It's gutless with economy off. Let's put it on. Feels the same. I have to say, this car feels more gutless than past Civics I've driven. I wonder if it's part of a, a master change in their tuning to wring the most MPG out of the car. It's just got no snap at all. Okay, now at freeway speed with the economy button on, I definitely feel a difference in tip-in on the throttle if I was trying to pick up some speed or jump ahead into a lane. It definitely dials the response back from a car that's already kind of responseless. I would definitely test drive a five-speed manual if you're amenable to that. The Civic is still a great everyday car with a refined ride and solid credentials. But the Ford Focus, the Hyundai Elantra, and even the stodgy Corolla make the Civic less and less of a standout. A 2012 Civic EXL is going to run you about 22.7 out the door with destination. This is the high trim model, of course. Option or non-nav. It adds 1450 which is kind of cheap, but not cheap enough for that unit. I'm going to delete that and go aftermarket. Now, your other tech options, a dealer installed remote start for 500 bucks. Oh, and by the way, the lower trim cars are available with a five-speed manual. This guy's automatic only.